A great trivia question might be, what do a city in Germany, porcelain China, and a quilt block have in common? The answer, they all share the name Dresden. Dresden, Germany during the 19th century was the center of the Romanticism movement that included painted porcelain, subsequently named Dresden, China. Quilters during that time admired the China designs, resulting in a quilt pattern by the same name, Dresden Plate. Kate Brzezinski, one of the great designers on the Sign with Nancy team, has taken interest in the Dresden Plate design and developed delightful variations. Kate, the Dresden design has both applique and patchwork. That's right, Nancy. The classic Dresden design actually begins with wedges that are cut out and then they're sewn together and then appliqued to a background square. Our first project showcases a quilt block with 12 wedges and peaked ends. Unlike our quilting predecessors, we no longer need to use paper patterns but can easily cut accurate shapes using rotary cutters and specially designed rulers or templates. Delightful Dresden appliques. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. When working with the Dresden plate design, the fabric selection can really change the look of your quilt pattern. And Kate, for this project, mm -hmm. you chose fabric that resembled it's porcelain. It's very delicate mm -hmm. looking. The, the, right, Nancy, this is the 12 bladed Dresden plate. And you have a sample that it's about the same size, but mm -hmm. it's using a tool that cuts or uses 20 blades. Quite a different look, and you've mm -hmm. used a larger center. And you can reference these in books. You'll find them reference blades, or you might have them as wedges. Right. And you right. can just use a fourth of a block, and you could have a fan. Right. So there's a, some different terminology. But these are traditional sizes. But you can also make anything in between the very large that we're going to show you. This ends up being a 40-inch block. Talk about a fast piecing and technique. I, I think, Nancy, you've been having a lot yeah, of fun with this size. I have. And you can change the center sizes. So regardless of the shape, whether you have 12 to 20 wedges or if you have large center circles or small center circles, the technique is the same. That's right. Here we have a variety of tools that mm -hmm. we have used for all the projects in this program. Um, some standard looking ones. Right. These are going to make uh, 20 blades for a full mm -hmm. Dresden plate. Down at the bottom here we have two tools. One is the tool that I actually used for the 12, the mm -hmm. 12 blade and a 16, so that'll change the look of your Dresden right. plate. And it all depends on the wedge, the d angle or the degree of the wedge. Right, right. And then, and then you your can, large. You can get large or small on this, on this section and a variety of centers. So it doesn't really matter what you use. It's a template s section and that you're going to do some cutting. Right, and I'll show you uh, just real quickly. I've got my fabric pre-starched. I found mm -hmm. that having it stiffen slightly really helps with the cutting. I've already cut one wedge and I'm lining up. This tool, I wanted to have a five inch blade or wedge, so I'm aligning on the marks and I'm going to cut five inch wedge and I think I got through. We're you have going lots to of shift layers there. Mm -hmm. And then just flip the tool very, very mm -hmm. simply and cut your second set. So this makes for very, very efficient fabric use for cutting your wedges. And here I've got another variety, sure. another wedge shape, but you can see how it was cut. And some templates are a little bit lighter weight, and rather than using a rotary cutter first off, you could trace 
using a marking pen. Now this is going to end up giving up my 40 inch plate and I'm just going to trace the edges and I decided that I'm going to have an eight and a half inch circle in the middle so I've just cut the length to meet the eight and a half inch mark and you'll read the directions that come with the variety of templates you may buy and then the same thing happens you're going to flip it over and trace and then align your rotary cutter and ruler and cut out the shapes and the longer the shape gets the, the more I like to use this tracing method first so after you've cut these techniques or these strips excuse me then it's time to do the sewing the first sewing step for the Dresden is to shape the peaks of the wedges and it's simpler than it looks it is very simple Actually, you set up your sewing machine for a quarter inch seam or use a specialty foot that will give you a quarter mm -hmm. inch seam very easily. Then I simply take the wedge, fold it in half, right sides together, meeting the longer edge of the wedge, and simply stitch a quarter inch seam. And I'm not stopping and cutting in between. I'm going to chain sew and actually let the wedges just stack up behind the machine and then after I have a couple sewn together we'll show you I do clip the threads um, trying to leave a little extra thread mm -hmm. at one end so let's show you that real quickly right here I have just two wedges and this is my fold this is my fold right along here. I try to leave a tail of the threads right near the wedge fold. So I clip close to the raw mm -hmm. edges. That way the seam does not come sure. apart. And now it's ready for pressing and we'll go to Nancy for that. That's right. And when pressing this, you can first do a little finger press, kind of finger press that seam open and then get it started. And then you may want to have a small iron next to your sewing machine and a board just to press that open and then turn right side out and I'm just going to turn this right side out and make sure that that point is sharp. Do take time to use a little uh, recipe card mark a line at a 45 degree angle right down the center because it's important next to align that seam and line so that these wedges are perfectly shaped and then after doing the stitching or the pressing then Kate is going to show that you're going to be meeting right sides together of the wedges and sewing from the fold to the inside to create either the plate or the fan. That's right here I have two wedges already lined up right sides together and we're actually using darker thread than you would normally use. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually lift the presser foot and the needle start a little ways in towards you from that fold on the wedge. Lower the presser foot and I'm going to take just a couple stitches and then reverse stitch back to that fold and then we'll continue. That way you have the stitches locked at the fold edge where they could possibly pull a Certainly. just slightly. And you're going to sew those into a, the fan shape or the plate shape, however many you'd like. And then the next step is to do some pressing. And I'll just show you this on my finished sample because you can see that those seam allowances have been pressed open very neatly. And then you can do a positioning on your fabric. Now here we cut a quilt block larger. Than, you can cut this according to your desired size. And you can see the press marks we've had. Well, we folded the fabric in half folded the quilt block again in half and then press the edges. That allowed me to align the plate or if you sections quarter marking so that you can see the intersections are in this area have all been aligned. It's centered in the block. Next you're going to set your machine at a blind hem stitch or a uh, blanket stitch and this is, shows the dark thread to do some stitching with clear thread to attach. And Kate, you can sew on this sample. Okay. I have the machine set up for the blind hem, or this is actually a smaller blanket stitch. We're using black thread, but you would normally, mm -hmm. of course, use uh, a matching color thread or, like you said, Nancy, a clear monofilament. And this is a much wider 
blanket stitch. I'm getting a little bit off here. And this is called applique because you're positioning that down. Right. And you'll see when we get back to the table that, that this stitching will not show. And as Kate continues to show, I'm just going to show you that we have the clear thread used in this sample and it looks as if it's been hand appliqued into place. The next step will show you how to add the center to the Dresden plate. To choose the size of the center applique is the next step. And on this super size block, I have a four and a half inch option, a six and a half inch option, and then here's a larger eight and, and a half. I think that's very dramatic. It, it is. And whether the design is large or small, you can make the centers that's right. any size you'd like. And you could use a template that has different options for the center, tracing out the sections for the size, or you could use a compass to make the design. And Kate, you've used a compass. Right, I have. I've simply got the center point um, in pinned, mm -hmm. and I'm tracing around. I've already traced this. We have this layered then with fusible interfacing. The non-fusible side is to the right side of the fabric square. Mm -hmm. We're then ready to stitch around with a small stitch length, the entire circle. I'm ready, and it's roughly cut out. And then I'm ready to pink the edge, either with a pinking shears, make sure it's a nice quality pinking shears. It'll cut beautifully. Or you can use a rotary cutter that mm -hmm. has a pinking edge blade. And, and it grades it. It grades it automatically. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go in with fine trimming. We've then cut away the in, inner area of the fusible interfacing. Leaving three-fourths of an inch to an inch. And Just it's, rough. And it was roughly cut. I did the cutting. But <laughs> it, rough doesn't matter. It's going to work just the same. It's turned inside out. And then we'll go to Nancy for some final pressing. And you might want to use either a bamboo point mm -hmm. um, creaser tool or a Hera tool to help smooth those edges So you kind of shorten the, or shrink a little bit the interfacing so that the pink, you can see maybe the pink is coming to this side, so I just do it section by section and keep pressing along the edge and presto, you have one pressed. How about that? <laughs> it works great. <laughs> yes. And and here you can see it's, it's fairly circular, so that as I'm working with an applique, this isn't on a background, but you can see you could just position it and center it using the same quarter pressing techniques and do the stitching. But if you're working with a fan. Right, you take your circle and simply quarter that circle and you have four centers for your fans. So you have quarter circles and that would be placed in the corner of the fan shape. Now using that blind hem stitch in a clear thread, we've used it in contrasting thread so that you could see you just top stitch it in place and the applique is finished. Take a less than traditional approach to the Dresden plate design, adding dimensional centers. Fabric yo-yos are the focal point, adding a playful appearance. Another departure from the norm featured in this quilt is the use of half and three quarter plates. These partial Dresden plates are equally stunning as full plates when placed at the corners and along the borders. I think you can see why I have Kate and also Donna on the sign with Nancy's staff because you're very sure. creative, great designers. And but Kate, your use of a partial Dresden plate at the corner and border is clever. It really added to the, the mm -hmm. quilt's theme. Here's the full plate mm -hmm. and the three quarter and the half, but what really made it fun was going with a yo-yo for a very dimensional center. We mentioned our co-worker Donna who worked with me on a program on yo-yos mm -hmm. several seasons ago. Now we have a yo-yo maker mm -hmm. that can make supersized, we're working with supersized designs today right. and you're going to make that big yo-yo. Right, I've cut the fabric squares approximately a half inch mm -hmm. larger than the tool, so you could use any size. The, there are two parts to this tool. And you have it snapped plate, together right and now. And I do have it snapped together. I don't know if you heard that real <laughs> briefly, but um, once the fabric is loaded into the tool, mm -hmm. I start actually at the back where I've put my needle down into the first hole. Mm -hmm. I've actually taken a couple stitches. I will actually, 
run the stitching all the way around. In and out, in and out, and there's, right. there's perfectly spacing so that you can see exactly where to stitch and there's an area for your thread to guide through so it's not going to be catching so you just sew in and out in and right. out. Right, you can't, you you can't, can't go miss. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Right, now this is a yo-yo that's ready to be drawn up. I've taken the tool, the plastic template out, draw it up, pulling the threads and I leave the threads long so I can knot them. Mm -hmm. There's a, would be a tiny little knot. I can use these longer threads then to actually attach and stitch through the yo-yo into the quilt. If we look at the back, you can see it's not exactly neat in this case, but it holds it beautifully. And then you did some hand stitching around the edge to hold right. the perimeter. And that way you can add great dimension to the Dresden plate with a yo-yo. Giving movement to a quilt design might require you to think outside the quilt block. Offsetting half plate designs allows the Dresden plate pattern to flow the length of the table runner. Kate gave this project another delightful twist, replacing the centers of the designs with bias trim for a fresh look. This time when you're working with this quilt project or this decorating project, you're not going to be working in blocks but in lengths. That's right. We've cut the backing fabric the length of the table runner that mm -hmm. we desired and we have given detailed instructions in the companion book. But we started with the design of half Dresden plates or half fans mm -hmm. and alternated them between the two halves of the table runner to give that flow. So you're going to cut two lengths of fabric approximately the length that you'd like for your finished table runner and you can see we have them aligned at one end slightly offset, but Kate, right. you've already placed one half dressed right. in this plate. Is, you kind of build this whole design as you go. We've created the half dressed in plate as instructed before, and they're also blanket stitched. This first one is in place. Then I'm ready to do some bias trim, which you're going to show Nancy. And you can have a bias tape maker, help whatever technique you'd like to use, your favorite technique. We have a bias tape maker using about a one inch strip cut been threaded through the maker and then we just press as we move along giving a half of an inch finished width and then and Kate you've already positioned that. I've already started positioning this. You can use pins or if a little glue stick mm -hmm. would help by all means use that but you would place the bias trim all the way around that inner area of the fan and then edge stitch or blanket stitch in place. Once that's sewn. It's an eyeball type of placement. It is. It's kind of free form, which mm -hmm. is fun. Place your second fan just where the mm -hmm. two folds will line up. Again, edge stitch in place, add the bias. And you get the idea. And repeat. And you just build until you reach the end of your table runner. And after appliquing all the pieces, then meet right sides together yeah. and that's sew the seam. And then right. the magic of the serpentine comes into play. So another option for delightful applique twist. Decorate your table with Dresden inspired poinsettias during the holidays. Applique smaller fabric wedges on top of a larger plate design, then forego a background fabric to provide another contemporary interpretation of our featured quilt pattern. I really enjoy this design since it has a lot of variety for any time of the year. Obviously with the color choices we have it for the holidays and notice the appliques that are added around the initial plate design and that's truly a full applique. It is and it's really very easy. We've completed our full mm -hmm. Dresden plate. The circle. But mm -hmm. Right, but we've cut extra smaller wedges and completed those. Now I'm going to just press under a quarter inch on both long edges of each wedge. Sure. Here we have a couple that are finished and then we're going to place the wedges on our completed fan or plate and randomly place because poinsettias in nature yes. have random petal yes. arrangements. You can also use the same size wedge on a smaller piece but just moving mm -hmm. the wedges into the interior and then we'll just cut that away after these are appliqued in place. And applique using the same technique that we showed you earlier, a blanket stitch, a buttonhole stitch, however you'd like. You could use matching thread, which we happen to do in this sample, adding a center circle. But again, we 
made this not on a block, but as a freestanding unit. Right. It has a backing that's cut approximately a half inch larger. The edges are turned under and you could easily edge stitch by hand or by machine. To make that dimensional. What we mentioned, you can have other times of the year that you could make this for a, a really casual so, dining. Right, for the summer, a real bright flower. Oh, and and then sunflower would be another sun. option. This is one of my favorites, Kate. You could, this one yes. is growing on me. I'm having fun <laughs> with this one. Make an oval shape, an applique, obviously, for a children's party, children's decoration, right. or you could make it with the traditional sure. sunflower design. Mm -hmm. On these particular designs, Kate did not overlay additional. Right. There was no need for the no. ex extra wedges. So you can see you can add an applique onto an applique to make the poinsettia. Make it dimensional by adding a circle backing so that it's free form. The Dresden, it's very versatile. Last season, during one of our Nancy's Corner segments, we brought to you a segment on quilt belonging. Originator Esther Bryan was our guest. This quilt, 120 feet long, 10 feet tall, represents a quilt block, hexagon quilt block, from every nation of the world. It has such an intriguing story that I'd like to welcome back Esther. Esther, hi, this, hi Esther, this quilt has traveled the world. It has many pieces to it. It has great stories. So in this follow-up, why don't you give us a little summary of where this quilt has traveled and some of the interesting stories about that. The quilt has traveled uh, coast to coast. It is the story, as you know, of humanity and not only every country of the world, but all our First Nations and uh, all our Inuit people. One of the neatest trips that we took was the Inuit people said, nothing ever comes up here. And uh -huh. so they said, you said there's a place for all, that's the theme of the quilt, so can, you, can we have the quilt? And we said yes, not having a clue how this would happen. We were passed off from one Inuit airline, handed us off to the next, and a group of volunteers, 16 of us, crossed the north in the dead of winter for 10 weeks. And it's been a time of healing for, for the Aboriginal peoples across North America as they've been given their place and been able to say what they want to see. Some of them have been very contemporary. They, they tell us that, you know, we want to be part of this world. Some have shown the tradition. Those mm -hmm. blocks are made of porcupine quills, deer skin, seal skin, all kinds of materials. And the design and the artistry is really extraordinary. It's been a really humbling experience to learn from these wonderful people. And as you mentioned, the unique fabrics that are included in this quilt, you told me the number. Oh, well, there are 263 blocks, but they're from mud cloth. Mm -hmm. They're made from uh, grass skirts from Tuvalu, um, a sleeping mat from Kiribati, um, carpets, some miniature carpets, 200-year-old linens that were woven in, in uh, North America, um, mm -hmm. every kind of fiber and fabric that tells the story of humanity, that who we are. And it's interesting, like food, we carry those mm -hmm. treasures and define yes. ourselves by that. Not everyone is able to see this quilt because it's large, it doesn't travel all over the world, but you have put together a book that features every block. It features every block and it, and it tells the, the story one by one. It actually follows the, the, uh, the colors of the quilt because it is the whole uh, spectrum of light. Mm -hmm. There are over 1,200 colors in there, jewel tones, and so every story, one by one, uh, people wrote um, who they were, uh -huh. and their personal stories, and their your story, and their mine, and others. We all have those things. Some are sad, some are funny, sure. some are, you know, um, moving. So quilting can really tie together the whole world. The thread of life goes through all. It does. It does. Your, some of your favorite blocks are, um, you, you told us in the last time you had one from Africa, another one from Iran, and these are your neighbors that you interviewed in Canada. Yeah, they're, you know, we see them on the news, we think that these people, whoever they are, or we get certain impressions and we think that's the way, but it's over there. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Our children go to school with them yes. now, we work with them. Right. Um, they're our neighbors, they live next door. We need to see the world and, and listen to what they have to teach us. 
Well, Esther, this follow-up on Quilt of Belonging is most interesting, and you can go to sewingwithnancy.com, click on Nancy's Corner, and under the 2400 series, you will find some information on Quilt of Belonging. Of course, Esther, you may find that you have viewers of Sewing with Nancy viewing your quilt all over the world. <laughs> well, that would be great. Well, thank you, thank you again for making this appearance, this second appearance on Sewing with Nancy. And thank you for watching Sewing with Nancy. Uh, we'll be back next time with more interesting sewing, quilting, and embroidering. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Nancy has written a fully illustrated book entitled Delightful Dresden Appliques, which includes all the information from this two-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2401. Order item number BK2401, Delightful Dresden Appliques, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at SewingWithNancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.